Yeah, um, you know, we there's never any excuses because that's that that's you know obviously the kids had a a big win yesterday right here on the campus of St. A's and, and and the gym tonight was quiet and we knew that New Haven is a very very good club and presents problems with the defense and and the big kid in the middle of the lane um, and we knew we were going to get punched and I used the same line that I said last night that let's see where we're at after the first media timeout whether we're up eight seven like we were or we done which we ended up being down like ten to two and I said it's okay. I wasn't worried about that. Um, I thought in the first 10 minutes when we did get, when they came at us like an experienced team in an NCAA tournament, like we're here to win the semifinal and go to the final and try to win, you know, the region. We didn't respond the way I, I've expected them to. Now that's probably my fault because I, I expect them, they're not, and Chris has been telling me all year, you know, you're young, you're young, you know, I, I don't look at them like that. Um, but I think we got punched in the mouth. Um, we didn't respond in the first half, but I will say this. I thought the second half was the way we're supposed to play. We played more aggressive. We got up and down the floor. I think we scored almost 40 points. Um, still held them to, I think, 77. The, the, the other kid hit a three at the, at the end of the game for 77, but I thought it was at 74. So we thought it would be, if we could get to 80, keep them to 74, it was good. But they, they played well. <laughs> they made some shots. I mean, you know, that three-point line and is, is something. And um, I couldn't be more proud of my kids, but heads off to Teddy and New Haven. They, they, you know, they, they played well. Coach, it's, it's one thing to, to watch a team and, and try to prepare for a team on film and see a seven-foot player and, mm -hmm. and how he plays defense. Mm -hmm. feels like it's a different thing for, for the players to actually be on the floor and experience it. Do you feel like... You know, it just, it's, it's so tough to, to prepare for that. I, I would say, and I was talking to, to Coach Ryan down right after the game because he coached at Pace for three or four years. I said, whenever you come to the NSA tournament, which sarcastically I like to call the any 10 Invitational, but uh, when, you, when you come to that, um, I think it's an advantage for the teams that play in the Northeast 10 because, and we'll use New Haven because we play them tonight, it's, it's an example, you get to play them once, twice. Three. Heck, over four years you might play me you know, eight or nine or ten times you get a tournament. So you got a feel, you know, and their kids have a feel. All year long, we didn't really have a post to the uh, post player with his back to the basket except for Derek. And Derek still likes to step out. So today during our shoot around, we were making our forwards, which they can shoot it. The, the Landon Shivers, the, the, the Mooses, um, John L's more of an off the bounce kid. So we, were at, we knew he was going to sit in the paint. And we knew that these kids had to step up. And to answer your question, have they shot 150 12-foot jumpers all year? No, they haven't. Because we are getting a roll or a pop or Evans or Heber. We aren't like that. So having that mismatch, if you want to call it, in the middle, maybe at the beginning of the game made some kids take shots that we expect them to make. But probably they haven't had the opportunity to make them over a whole season. And coaching is nothing about putting your kids in position to be successful. So I guess tonight I, you know, I, I, I didn't get them to be successful in, in elbow jump shots. Um, early on you said down 10-2 you weren't worried. Yeah. But then it, it, it became more and more difficult for you guys to get shots in the paint and the shots on the outside were right. falling. Um, did you ever feel like game was slipping away at that point or, or, or were you still feeling that you could make some adjustments? I, I thought I think I burned a timeout pretty early in it to try to stop the momentum and you use the full just to try to resettle them down and, and knowing I was couldn't get to the media. Um, I, I felt it was just my club I think is very very talented and, 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 and but they're 18 to 22 year old young men. Sometimes in basketball in the sport we love to coach when you face adversity, sometimes individuals think that they're going to do everything. I'm, going to, I'm the one that's going to take us and lead us out of this. And I, I, and halftime I told them, I said, I see a lot of that, that it's a lot of me and I on the floor right now versus we. When you face adversity and you get down and it could slip away from you, you know, it's the old analogy. You want to be hit with, a, with an open hand or a fist and you want to try to keep it, you know, together. And I thought we rushed a few shots. I thought a few times we might have gambled on defense, and everything's going to get magnified when you're down 18, 20 points anyway, knowing the type of defense New Haven has. So you know if you get into the 70s, you're, you're good. I mean, I think we, we told the kids that. I think New Haven's 
given up maybe 65, 66 points in their last 10, 11 games. Now they've lost three or four of them because of an offensive whatever that night or better defense from the other team. You know, tonight their defense was very good and the first half took us out and they made shots. I mean, it's a make or miss game. And just a follow up, you, you sure. did have um, a 26 point deficit cut it down to 12 uh, on the steal and Evans's and one opportunity. Yeah. At that point, with a lot of time left, what are you thinking? I think we've been here before. <laughs> it's been like this the last two, three weeks, last three, four, five months. And in one of the timeouts, I told them, I said, look, you know, don't look at it like we're the underdog, but the longer or the closer we get to New Haven right now, the tighter their legs are going to get, the tighter the shots are going to be. They're going to feel this because they could possibly blow a, whatever you just said, 26-point lead with a chance to go to a regional final. Um, you know, it's a heck of a lot easier to knock down shots when you're up 30 versus the tie game or whatever. So we just tried to stay the course, but I did tell them that, Chris. I said, you know, we're right there. Um, I think that was at the eight-minute mark. And I said, let's get it to, it was 12, it was. And I said, let's get it to six at the next media. So let's see if we can get it to six. And I think we had a couple of looks. And then we had a couple breakdowns. The kids got in the lane and made a couple shots, you know. But they're good, you know. You know what, these 10 guards are big. They're strong. They hook. They push. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, Coach, when we, when we talked earlier in the week, you, you said, you know, you wanted your, your team to, you know, enjoy this experience um, because, again, you know, as much as people say you're young, you're a year ahead, you know, the, the future is bright for the for this small ball program, and it undoubtedly is. You said you never know if this is the only time. Um, so with that thought in mind, what would be sort of your, your overarching message to your team coming out of this experience? Well, I think I, I've been trying to, to instill in them that when I took the program over, my expectations isn't just about getting here and, and, and going one and done and getting out of here. My expectations is to get here every year, uh, to compete every year. Uh, my expectations is not to have to win the, the CACC to get an AQ, but to, to build our schedule up, which we would have if we were taking care of some business probably. I think I might have told you, maybe I told my kids, that if we'd beaten some of the Northeast 10 teams we had at the beginning of the year, the first 10 games, we could have and had the end that we had, we could have easily been a 3-4 seed. By beating Adelphi and Franklin Pierce in Southern Connecticut, they were having an assumption they were on our schedule. We just fell short to that, so we didn't really feel like we were an eight seed coming in. But you never know. So my expectations every year are that. But the journey that these kids need to take, they've got to try to understand that my expectations need to try to be met. It's not, hey, we were there and we're going to be there again. You're not going to come back without working hard without being in better shape. I think I told them at the end of the game, uh, after the game, you know, what's going to drive you in July to go pick up a basketball and get better at your game or go to the beach? Is it going to be how you feel on March 13th right now? I said, that's, you, you're going to answer that for me and it'll be an eye test in September. But we just got to continue to get better. I know what's out here so that they don't. Okay, I know what the Northeast Ten is all about. I know what the East is. I, heck, I even know what Northwest Missouri. I know these clubs. They're extremely talented clubs. You know, the very good Division Two teams across the country are mid-level Division Ones. Just the geographic and where you're drawing kids from. You know, so it's a whole different level when when you get to here, and then you take the next step this year to go to Evansville. It's a whole different level. So we got to try to get there. And by no means am I staying up here saying I'm going to lead Caldwell to a national championship. But I think if you prepare for that and you work at hard at that that way, everything else will take care of itself. So we're going to prepare for that. And we're certainly going to try to outwork everybody to, to get back here. I have one last question. Sure. This is literally out of left field. Okay. We know that you were a 30-plus year assistant before you took over the head coaching job. But you were also a longtime successful softball coach. What did all your head coaching experience as a softball coach bring to the table for you for this experience? Well, my kids get to look at all the banners every day in practice. <laughs> so they said, oh, coach, you don't lose too much. I said, well, you know, I have good players, so it's not a rocket science. So um, I, I think that's part of my expectations over the last 25 years, 28 coaching the softball program as long as I have, that we put that on a map that is probably a top 20 program. Um, expected to be in the NCAAs every year, expect to be in a regional final or in the Super Regionals or even in the World Series, National Championship um, and that. So I think taking that,
crisp in my background and understanding uh, I, you know, the much I love basketball, I've been able to see that and work with that. So I'm going to try to instill it. It's like what I did, you know, my softball programs, we have practice at 4. You know, my kids are there at 3.30. It's, t it's taken me a little while to men's basketball practice at 4. you got to be here at 3.30. So it, it's, it's, nothing's going to jump. Do you know what I mean? I, I think we jumped this year. I mean, if you look across the board and people say, well, you know, where the heck did Caldwell come from? Picked fifth in the league. Um, and now, now you've got maybe a little bit more of a bigger target on your back. So instead of being the hunted, all right, you, you know, instead of being the hunter going, you might be the hunted. You know, and that's what you want. I've always told my girls that. The name on the front of the jersey fires people up. When they beat you, it's like they won a World Series. And that's – so you don't want that feeling. So we want the same feeling in basketball. You know, if so-and-so beats us, it's like, you know, a national championship for them because that's the reputation you have. And, and you guys here at St. A's, you know what it's like. You know, the Northeast Town Belly, you guys, you know, you got great sports programs, top to bottom, not just basketball, but – I mean, you're talking about basketball now. So that, you know, you're going to try to drive that through them and have them understand it. It's not easy.